Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And a very warm welcome to each one of you. Thank you for coming. And I assure you, a brilliant conversation awaits you with none other than Mr. Rahul Ravel. A big round of applause. Thank you. I extend a hearty welcome to you, sir, to our Orange City. I know this is your first trip. It's not only a pleasure, but also a privilege to have you amongst here today. Hello. A very well-known name, Hello. not only in the Bollywood industry, but also Hello. amongst us, Pan India. He's an Indian film director and editor in Bollywood, known for blockbuster films like Love Story, Betab, Arjun, Daket, Anjam, Arjun Pandit, Jo Bole Sonihal, and others. <coughs> He has been nominated for Filmfare Award twice to his credit. In his book, Raj Kapoor, The Master at Work, he goes down the memory lane to document his revered front row seat as an assistant to him, the immortal master of Indian cinema. Delighted and so happy, I present to you Mr. Rahul Ravel. Uh, thank you so much, Monica. Good evening, all. I consider myself lucky and privileged one sitting next to a legend who has made some classics like Love Story, Betab, Arjun, and many more. And I'm sure everyone in this room uh, grew up watching these movies. I'm sure, right? I still remember those beautiful songs like Dekho maine dekha hai ye ek sapna. Sorry to interrupt you, but why? at every place where I go to. Why do people have to remind me I've become so old? No, sir. That they all say, you know, we've grown up watching your films. So, you know, I, I agree I'm old, but you don't have to keep reminding me that all no, the time. No, that's, no, that's just to tell you that these songs are still the evergreen songs and everyone loves these songs. Okay. Yeah, that's, and that beautiful song of, you know, Jab Hum Jawa Honge, Jaane Kaha Honge. That those beautiful songs and I'm so privileged to be here with you, sir, today. So you started assisting Raj Kapoor ji when you were in your teens, 15, 16 years. At that time, he was working on the film Mera Naam Joker. That's right. And then you continued assisting him in uh, Bobby. Yeah, in between, uh, I did uh, Kalar or Kal with Kal Raj Kapoor. Aaj or Kal, yes. And then I did Bobby. Yeah, and, and then uh, you assisted him for Bobby. So what made you choose a career in cinema and what was it that drove you to Raj Kapoorji when your father, Sri H.S. Ravelji, was also a filmmaker? Yeah, uh, I was never keen on uh, taking this up. Uh -huh. I was uh, more of a, a student of science okay. in school. And okay. I wanted to do nuclear physics. That's once very I, interesting. That's once very I finished school, and I got my admissions done for my undergraduate Wonderful. in uh, Canada. And um, I had a gap six months because uh, my batch was the last batch to appear for the senior Cambridge exams before they became ISC. So the exam finished in December. And uh, colleges in uh, uh, Canada and America start in September. September. So I had that gap, nothing to do. And um, Chintu, that's Rishi Kapoor, who was a childhood friend. Uh, we knew each other for 60 years. From the time we were in uh, play school in nursery, we uh, right through all these years. And he called me up one day and said, your exams are over. And that is starting shooting. The circus portion of Minam Joker. So come over, let's go to Azad Nadan and uh, watch the shooting. So I said, Chindu, what's the point of watching the shooting? We've all watched it so many times. He said, no, there's a lot of Russian girls okay. there. And, <laughs> and um, they're all uh, wearing short skirts. Uh -huh. So, you know, that was a major... Attraction okay, for us to go, <laughs> to watch those girls with short skirts. <clears throat> so, we went there and uh, when I entered the big top, uh -huh. 
I saw Raj Uncle. I used to call him Raj Uncle because we were kids and we used to go around and uh, go to the house and parties and mm -hmm. uh, I saw Raj Uncle working. Now that was the thing which sparked off this sparked this thing off in me. When I saw this one man single handedly handling five thousand junior artists, extras sitting in the circus, a unit of four hundred and fifty people, about three hundred circus trapeze artists and other so you know it's one man individually handling all these people and then the actors. Yeah. And he knew exactly what he wanted and he was doing exactly what he had planned. So at that time, my mind only went in watching him work. To me, it was like uh, a conductor of a symphony, you know, who stands there and conducts the entire orchestra. That was flawless. So, uh, the first disappointment was that uh, I didn't see the Russian girls who we had gone <laughs> My mind was on the Azam at that time. But then, uh, the next day, uh, without being told, I went to the shooting again. And uh, I just walked into the and sat right behind. And then I went another day, and then another day. And after about 10 days, I told my mother, I said, look, I'm going to be doing nothing till, uh, you know, when was that? Till August. So, I might as well work. And, you know, so they were quite happy. Dad always thought I should get into what mm -hmm. he was doing. And um, he said, okay. So, he went to talk to Ratsa. Okay. And um, he told Ratsa and uh, Ratsa said, yeah, I, I thought this will happen because I've been seeing him here for the last 12 days. I've been seeing him every day, just sits in one corner and he's just been watching us and I'll be very happy to keep him. But uh, he called me and said, but remember one thing, this is something if you're stepping into it. I don't think you'll ever go back. So, are you prepared for that? I said, no, I have to definitely go for my nuclear future. So, he said, good. Now, I'm sure you will not go back. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's it. I just went there and uh, this was uh, the month of December. And... Uh, I'm, I'm still there. Since then, there yeah. is no looking back. So, did you get to see the Russian dancers finally? Oh, uh, the Russian <laughs> women, yeah. Got to see them, worked very closely with them. But by that time, I had just gone to my work. So, you know, it didn't matter if they were wearing their clothes or not. <laughs> you know, it was just that they were just working. And, uh, yeah. and I was just 15 yeah. at that time. Too young. And um, the first time I entered a discotheque, was, uh, you won't believe this, was at the age of 27. I had wow. never been into a discotheque. Wow. I, I was just, uh, I decided that if I'm going to work, I'm going to put everything into it. Okay. So that's how it went. That's, that's quite, you know, commendable and amazing. And at the age of 15, 16, you still got the clarity that what do you want to jump into? And if you look at today's generation, with us also, still we are not very clear where do, you, where do we all want to go ahead with. And uh, just, you know, going by what you said, just observing Raji, you got your, you know, the clarity inside you that this is what you want to do. That reminds me of Dhrarvacharya and Aklavya. So sitting outside, observing the master and learning the skills. That is, you know, very amazing that is. Thank you. Yeah. So you had the luxury of working just not with Raj Kapoor ji, but probably with Rishi ji, Shami ji, and the entire Kapoor family. So what makes them unique from the rest of the families? After 70, 80 years also, the first family of the Bollywood, if anyone talks about, it's the Kapoors, right? So what's unique about them and what, and how are they different? 
unique about them is their love for food. <laughs> they, they, they're, they're all uh, big foodies. Apart from that, uh, uh, see, Ratsa was completely, uh, like he said, you know, if cinema did not exist, I would be non-existent. Non yeah. This is what he said, which is true. He only lived his films while making a film. He would eat, drink, only the film. He'd be talking about it all the time. Yeah. So his mind was focused. And I think the other Kapoor's also had this, but nobody was as focused mm. as he was. As he was. Yeah. And uh, he was there. He was, uh, Papaji was there. Prithira Kapoor. Right. And, uh, so they all had uh, one generation above them mm -hmm. to guide them through if they had any problems. True. And then they had, uh, I mean, Shami uncle and Shashi uncle had Ratsa, the elder brother, who would take them through. So that's how I think. Uh, but uh, Raj Kapoor was a man who lived cinema. Mm -hmm. I remember in uh, 1970, uh, he was the chairman of the jury for the International Film Festival. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I'd gone to Delhi with him to watch films. And we see films in different languages, mm -hmm. right? Couldn't understand the meaning. But he would sit and watch the film. And in about 15 minutes of the film, he would turn on to me and tell me exactly where the story is going. You know, that you can see this character, this character, this will happen. And I used to be amazed at this. This wow. was his whole thinking was cinema. This is how he looked at it. And um, I remember a big compliment for me uh, was when I made Arjun. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm dealing with a man who uh, analyzed cinema in this way. And um, we were running the film in a preview for him. And um, in Arjun, there's a scene where you realize that Anupam Kher was manipulating Sunny. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was manipulating Sunny. And when that scene came, when you realize that Anupam Kher is evil, he's not nice. Ratha had suddenly jumped up from his sofa and said, let's stop the film. So we stopped it. We said, you know, it's probably one of the second or third time in the world that I had something I never expected, which has happened over here. Okay. I was always thinking it would go in another way. Mm -hmm. So that was a great compliment. You know. His sense of cinema was fantastic. Yeah, he was the institution in himself. Absolutely. And uh, like what you have said in your book, all the aspects of cinema, the Bollywood, the emotions, the expressions, uh, very beautifully you have uh, written those things in the book where he is a master in all these segments, whether it is the actor, the acting, the Everything. songs, the com compositions, the makeup, the dress up, every aspect of the movie he was brilliant at that. You have mentioned that in the book. Everything, aspect. everything. He did everything himself. Uh, music was uh, something he had God's gift. Yeah. He could just, uh, he could see an instrument and start playing it. So I have, you know, written uh, one thing on the music also, uh, where uh, Lakshmi Kant Pyarelalji came up with one song of Bobby. Uh, so there was uh, the edition where he wanted one alap somewhere. So can we talk a little bit about that? And Before then, let me talk about his music. Uh, yeah, I must tell you my yes. um, uh, my exposure to Raj Kapoor and his music. Uh, I just started working, and um, there was a song we had to record for Miram Joker. Hmm. So there was to be a sitting for the song to decide on the situation. And I went to the music room. And uh, for me, it was a great moment to be in because Raj Kapoor, Shankar ji, Jai Kishan ji, Hasad Jaipuri, Shalindra ji, Mukesh ji. Now, oh, seeing these nice. people in one room yeah. was a sight 
worth seeing. And uh, they got into discussing this song. And uh, me, a 16-year-old, I'd become 16 by then. I was shocked. Because, um, you see, whenever a music director sings a tune to you, he uses dummy words. Mm -hmm. It's just words to, like uh, in Love Story in the song, it was my I, 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 Aja. Mm. There's just words which Panjim used. So the dummy words which they used, I, I can't even repeat them. I have never heard those kind of gadis in my life. <laughs> so, I was shocked to see these people who are the masters and the filth, what they spoke about. <laughs> and none of them had any... The expression was normal, you know, and they were all deep into hearing it. And uh, uh, somebody would say, Ki, uh, ye theek lag raha when he said, Nee, wo jo ma ki, ye hai, wo ban ki ka ke sunao. And he would say, Wo yes. So this was shocking. And I realized this is how they make their tunes. And then they get the words written. So it was. A cultural shock for me to watch these That's people. That's quite a deep inside story what we are yeah. listening now. <laughs> and um, my publisher wanted me to, uh, write that. to write that. I said I can't, you know. <laughs> I, I'm embarrassed to even say it myself. So I have never known. But it is to some extent uh, been mentioned. So in Bobby, uh, in this Hantum Kamne Bandhu, just while... Uh, we were recording the song. He called uh, Lakshmi ji and said, Ki, uh, in this, see, uh, he uh, never heard stories or he saw stories. Mm. That, I think, was his biggest asset. That when somebody would narrate a story to him, he would be seeing it. And that made him want to make that film or not. So when the song was being recorded, he called uh, Lakshmi and said, Ki at this particular place, I'd like an alap of Lata Ji. So, he said, why? He said, no, there is a, a place I've seen in Kashmir. And uh, it's this four roads. And, uh, yeah. Because the words that I've heard, hum dum kahi kho ja rahe ho, aur rasta kho ja hai. So, he said, I want an alap. This is where I want to shoot it. <coughs> So, Lakshmi Ji and Pyare Ji got together. They tried the alarm. It wasn't happening. Then Lata Ji was called. They tried the alarm with her. Yes. And Ratha was just sitting there for about an hour. And finally, they came and said, uh, they said, Raji, this doesn't uh, fit in. So, he said, uh, do you mind if I try, try it? the show. And then he sang the Allah. It was perfect. Wow. I mean, here you had Lakshmi Khan, Pyaralal and Lata Mangeshkar just standing and looking at him. <laughs> right? He sang it. And Pyaral Ji came up. We were all sitting and said, is this a human being? I don't think he is. Because there's no way I could have even thought about this Allah coming in. Right. But he had it all worked out. Wow, isn't that amazing? A person having deep information, knowledge of the things of each and every part of... He was literally, if I could go by the words of the book, what sir has written, uh, lived each and every moment he has spent on all the films whom he was part of. Whether it's the music, the acting, the actor, the dresses, the setup, everything. 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 That's how he is the institution in himself and the legend. So you are an icon yourself. Your father was a gifted director. So you have carried the legacy ahead beautifully. How has the Kapoor family shaped your career? Well, uh, Raj Sahib was the biggest influence on my life. In fact, uh, I've written a book about uh, the four films uh, love story, mm -hmm. Betab, Arjun and Dakar, of how he affected 
me and how what I learned from him came there and uh, he was there for me. Any questions I had, any problems I had, I could just go to him and ask him, Ki, these are things, you know, how do I solve this, how do I solve that? And he would always be there. In fact, in Love Story, Rajendra Kumar was the producer. Mm -hmm. At that time, when the film was being made, uh, Rajendra Kumar's son, Kumar Kaurav, was to marry Ratsa's daughter. Okay. They were engaged. Mm -hmm. And um, Ratsa, and finally that film uh, turned into a problem for me. I completed the whole film. It was ready for release. And uh, it's the only film in the world which does not carry a director's name. There is no director's name in Love Story. It's the only film in the world, yeah, which does not carry a director's name. So why so? Uh, I had a problem with Anand Gopal. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, the funny thing was that when I told Raj Sabha I'm doing this film for Anand Gopal, he said, are you sure you want to work with him? I said, yeah, he said, be careful. He is not a very nice person. And uh, through the film, he kept telling me that this will happen, this will happen, this will happen, this will happen. So for me, he became Baba Raj Kapoor because everything he told me was happening. <laughs> everything he kept telling me was happening. Okay. And. Uh, when it finally it turned into a problem, the film was ready for release mm -hmm. and uh, I decided to take my name off. So I went to Ratsa and uh, I went to him at about 2 o'clock in the morning because I was, you know, not being able to decide and I went to him and uh, I said I decided I'm taking my name off the film. He said, I'm very proud of you. So I know what you've been through. And uh, remember one thing, uh, you will always get work, provided you know your job, which I'm sure you do. Don't worry, let, you know, a few months go by, but something good will happen. But I'm very proud that you decided to take this step. He said, but he had told me, he says, Rajinder Kumar wants his own name to be there as director because the film has shaped out well. People who have seen it are saying, you know, the director's work is very good. And Rajinder Kumar wants his own name. So I decided to put a stop to that. So I went to court and filed a petition that I want to remove my name from the film on the condition that he does not put anybody else's name over there. And then the court gave an order. Okay. So that's how that film came up. And um, it released and it was history and uh, I had no it's work after that. one of the biggest that. hits that movie is. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. And, uh, but work came again yeah. later on. But um, see, one thing I realized since then, which I always tell kids and everywhere where I go, is if you want to become a director or in this industry, don't get married. <laughs> so people say, why? I said, look, I took that step in love story because I was not married. I, I, I did not have anybody, you know, to feed, anybody to look after. It didn't matter. Because I know what I went through for those two years after giving one of the biggest hits in the industry, the biggest ever at that time, I was without work completely. Till Zarinder called me for Beta. Beta. So, um, so these are the back to back two hits what you have given. Uh, then uh, in Beta also, uh, when I had problems, I used to go and ask him how to solve things. And um, he actually helped me. And he was there all the time. In fact, um, the only time when I did not listen to what he said was in Dakar. 
when he saw the whole film, he loved it. He said, but I, I don't think the climax works, you know, because um, the sequence where uh, they shave off Raki's hair is, is horrifying. And then when Sunny's got to kill the villain, it's too simple. But I did not listen to him, and the film did not do, did not do well. And um, so was this because of the intensity of the emotions you were showing in the picture, shaving off Rakhiji's hair and, and all that? Yeah, because that was a sequence which uh, uh, had very funny repercussions. Mm -hmm. uh, when the film was being seen in uh, previews and all this, uh, we had um, a lady faint. Oh, really? Yeah, she passed out. Oops. Uh, we had called an ambulance to mm -hmm. get out of the preview theater. Uh, Rekha Ji's uh, hairdresser, uh, she had gone hysterical. I mean, literally hysterical. Um, Shabana. Uh, had gone into a shell. For a week, she didn't speak to anybody in the house. She would just sit in a corner and she'd have tears. Uh, that, that did shock. Ratsa was breathing heavily. You know, he said, we've got to break it because... Yeah, because that's quite an intense because, scene uh, in the movie. But he said, then the climax is not is not working. In fact, I can I have the book? Yes. I'll just read out where I have wound up the book. <clears throat> this was um, when he passed away and his funeral was taken. And when we reached uh, the funeral ground, and, uh, so I said that I stood alone in a state of shock and could not fathom that my guru, philosopher and guide, had left me open. I was wondering how this would affect my life and the journey ahead. Who would I turn to for advice? And who would be the hardest critic of my creative journey? Would I creatively progress or stagnate? I have to admit that it's going away had affected me deeply. This is where I ended that book, mm -hmm. which actually did. Is passing away did affect me. And um, uh, see, this whole book was written without any uh, references. It was all from my mind. So it was so, uh, so embedded into me that once I started the book, things kept coming back and back and back. And now there's more things which come back. Yeah, so that is what I wanted to ask uh, when we spoke in the room also, that uh, there are so many books on Raj Kapoorji. Everyone has written so much about them. So I really want the audience to know something from you that why should they buy this book? What is so special about Raj Kapoor, the master at work? Yeah, they should buy this book uh, because I might get some royalty out of it. <laughs> so that should be the A reason for it. Of course. Which I'll never get publishers, never do it. Yeah. <laughs> when I last asked the publisher, I said, how many copies are sold? And uh, three people from the publishing uh, department in one day, gave me three different figures. Okay. One said uh, 10,000 books. The second one said 6,000 something. Okay. And the third one said 3,000 something. And which was the real figure? We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. But uh, no, see, uh, the difference between this and the other Rajkum books. Yeah. Uh, this, like uh, what Mrs. Rajkapu told me before I wrote this book. She said, Rahul, I said, Shanti, I'm going to write a book on Ratsa. She said, you must. Because you are the only living associate of his who worked very closely with him. And you know his complete way of working. You know how he worked. I don't know things which you know. 
you know and if you don't write it the world will never know how raj kapoor thought how he made his films it's a lesson people will never learn so that i think is uh, where this book uh, it, it it has a lot it it has very funny moments and um, uh, there's is um, there's one very beautiful uh, um, moment in the book which you have shared where you are lying about some sequence in the movie so uh, which he was not aware of you said that you have noted that in your notepad yeah yeah that was it yeah that's uh, if we can See, talk a little I, bit I, about uh, that um i was very close to the man in the it was he, he was quite dependent on me as an assistant that uh, i would be there i would know things and um, <clears throat> when uh, bobby was being made uh, dimple suddenly decided to get married mm. the film was not complete and um, we told us uh, i came to know about it mm-hmm. so he had gone to calcutta and he came back i told him this. and he said that's not true, right because it's a teenage love story fine she wants to get married let's complete the film and let her get married when we reached the studio we took in the car uh kaka ji and dimple were waiting outside the studio for him and they said we decided to get married married now he could not say anything it's okay uh then you get married on thursday this was on a sunday so this thursday hai sir i'll make all the arrangements mai karwa deta hu now they came out and they said you know rata said get married on the thursday and um, we can't say no to him no, no, no. you know but it's too quick now i knew why he said thursday okay because he had planned the schedule of bobby from saturday okay so he wanted them get married before that so uh-huh. ek musibat jo hai sabse nikal jati hai and um, they got married and um, thursday night was reception and uh, saturday morning we left for pune okay for the shooting uh-huh. and um, we shot that song mujhe kuch kehna hai and um, if you see the song carefully see this is what made him the master which he was uh, he had given her a dupatta in that song and he was very very sing to see that her hands were concealed Okay. Under dupatta, she never saw the mandi. Mandi, oh, okay. right? So people never saw the mandi. But there is one shot. If you look carefully, uh-huh. you will see the mandi. And um, when uh, somebody said, "Yeah, I saw the mandi in that one shot," he said, "You were not looking at the song then. <laughs> you were trying to find the mandi. You know, you will never." And that's where it went. So anyway, then we went for this. the climax shoot to a place called hugnikal and you were asking about uh, the jacket when i seen the jacket of hugnikal and because um, there he uh, wanted to finish things as quick as he could but he had one scene where in the climax of bombay the boat jump off a hill into the water and um, so one shot we had of chintu and nimbu jumping off from a rock mm-hmm. so i went up to then i said the nimbu this rock is just two feet high you know i need you to jump off down the rock and she said no i'm not doing it i said why she said i'm pregnant oh no okay. i said in a unit of 500 people you want me the only person to tell this to <laughs> so i went and told rasam and uh, his reaction was not there he said we just got to finish this film as soon as possible so we split into two units 
that one side he'd be shooting the dialogue portion and the action, train not running, plants are running, would be handled by another unit. Okay. So we had another assistant then. So we hired a new assistant there. It was Coco called you, said it now. And um, we got into two units. So I was with him where he was shooting the dialogue. <coughs> now finally, when both the units came together to shoot, and they came on the set, so Premanji came. So I told the costume guy, I said, where's the jacket? jacket. So he said, uh, we've shot the uh, duplicates. There's been no jacket. So I called Kuku. I said, what happened to the jacket? He said, yeah, we forgot. <laughs> I said, you shot seven days and you forgot. He said, I forgot. I said, Kuku, we've shot the scene before this climax. We've shot the scene after the climax. There's a jacket in both in between. He said, what do I do? I said, you tell the boss, there'll be, you know, he, he might kill you. So I said, just keep quiet. Don't give him the jacket. And we kept on shooting. When we finished, um, so he said, so everything is over. We shot everything. I said, there's one shot left. So, so he said, kya shot hai? I said, wo Primnanji gaadi se usarte and he sees uh, the villain, Prem Chopra, and he takes off his jacket and he runs towards him. He said, why does he take off his jacket? <laughs> oh, I said, you told me that he take off his jacket. I never said it. He said, I can't, I can never say such a stupid thing. I said, sir, I said, you know, I used to write it on a, on a piece of paper, what shots are balanced. I said, sir, it's written over here. So he says, it's not possible. There's something wrong. But anyway, now he couldn't say anything. So we took this shot. And it looked terrible on screen also. Right from there till the release, every time we came to a scene, he would see it and say, did I tell you all to <laughs> not give the jacket? I said, yes, you did. So why wouldn't we? And this went on till the premiere. <clears throat> and at the premiere, he told me, listen, I could have never told you this. I did it. What went wrong? Tell me that now. So then I told him finally. And so then he had a... Finally, the truth was the revealed truth after that and, uh, so that's, that's So this entire book is filled with so many wonderful uh, experiences and events, which I think you all should uh, go and read about this one. So uh, you mentioned about, you know, when I asked about uh, the impact of Kapoor's in framing your career. How was Raj Kapoor Sahab as the mentor? Or how was you as the mentee? I mean, what impact did he leave uh, on you being the mentor in your life, the career what you are having right now? Well, um, to be disciplined, think about your work all the time. Don't let your mind get distracted. And just think about your work. And uh, good, bad, don't let that ever hit you. You'll make films that are not successful. Everybody does. Don't let it hurt you. One film is gone. Because I've seen him go through with this in Miranam Joker, where he had lost everything. Yeah. And uh, he had mortgaged everything off. But when then he decided to make Bobby, uh, the studio, everybody in the studio said, this is crazy because, you know, uh, Dharminder came to meet you, Hey Mamani came to meet you, make a film with them, you know, we're in debt. So he said, I'm making a teenage love story, I can't make a teenage love story with Dharminder and Hey Mamani. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a new one, a new girl. And um, he made that film with all these handicaps, but he shot it exactly the way he shot his other films. Nowhere did we feel that he's trying to pull. And it paid in what he wanted to do. That's it. I think that is one advice all of us should take back home. Do whatever the best you can. Never go by the good or the bad. Everything will fall in place once you, know, you start believing yourself. So one thing, uh, how did 
the Raj Kapoor or Raj Uncle become Raj Sahab in your life? Uh, that's in the book. There's a chapter there. Yes. That it, it so happened was that uh, when I decided that I'm mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. going to carry on working with him as mm -hmm. an assistant, so I went to see him to talk to him. And uh, when I entered the cottage, it just, uh, you know, I just uh, called him Saab. Mm -hmm. So it just so happened that uh, it was not conscious, but I just called him Saab. And uh, he would call me by my pet name. You know, we all had these stupid pet names. So he would call I me Babu. All the Punjabis have the all pet Punjabis, names. All Punjabis, yeah. yes. <laughs> and, um, he also started referring to me as Rahul. Okay. So it was a sudden kind of a, Shift, a switch. Change. Which, uh, okay. Hey, but uh, the, the thing is the humor in him. I know you must be short of time, but um, there are few incidents of his which are very, very funny. And they're all true incidents. Uh, you must uh, read the book and uh, uh, believe me, they're all true. They've all, these things have happened. I think that is uh, the thing where we should be having one with us all now to read. So you, uh, I'll just take the last question and then we will open the questions to the audience. So There's one incident I must tell you about. Yes, I'm sir. sorry even if time is... Uh, no, no, sure. We are all yours. Holding, uh, <laughs> we are all yours. <laughs> that, you know, it says 10 minutes and 5 minutes. Uh, uh, we were coming from uh, a party in town and uh, it was quite late at night and... Uh, his financial controller in RK uh, had passed away. His son became a distributor of RK's films in South Indian. And he had not paid any of the profits of Bobby to Ratsan. You know, he was supposed to give a large share. So while driving back, he suddenly told the driver, Ki gaadi right mm -hmm. So in Matunga, when the, so he said, Ravan Savgar. Raman Sahib was the financial controller. So, okay, and he got down from the car late at night and standing on the road, he started screaming, Ramu, Ramu. Now, as there some lights went on, you know, you have somebody screaming Ramu outside your house. Some lights went on, some people came down and, you know, they were whispering Raj Kapoor, Raj Kapoor. And then Ramu came running down. Now, Ramu was a typical South Indian in a, in a lungi which was half folded. Uh -huh. No kurta, just chandan on his thing. And he came and said, Yes, sir. And Ratsav said, Ki, Mera profit ka hai babi ka. <laughs> so he said, Mera paas hai. He said, Tumare paas kyun hai? Mera profit hai, mere paas hona chahiye. So he said, I'll get it. 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 So he said, it got a little, this thing, the argument. And he said, OK, I'll give you tomorrow. The night sir, instantly, pulled his lungi off. Now, there was a big crowd over there. He pulled his lungi off. Ramu was standing stark naked in that gully with all his neighbors. Ratsa wrapped in me, sat in his car and said, Kal paise dekhe jau, aur lungi dekhe jau, and went away. You know, and Ramu was left there. You know, this was the, the man he was. He was yeah. I told him next day, I said, how can you take off somebody's lungi? He said, kyun mere paise ka gaya, wo hai. So, they're very wonderful mentions in the book and you have very beautifully mentioned about uh, the parties he used to throw and the actual, the real uh, setup of the parties in the pictures with, you know, big, big cakes and champagnes and everything to be served after the yeah, show, the entire yeah. staff. So there is so much we can talk about here. But uh, looking at the time, we are already running short of time. Uh, I would just take the last question as I mentioned earlier. So you are 71? I will be 71. You will be 71. I've had a privilege of interacting with you in last few hours or a day because I here I'm talking with you. Uh, sir, uh, I find you very vivacious. 
I keep, uh, you know, what keeps that energy at 71? Because I see a lot of people in their late 60s and 70s, uh, probably at that time they start tapering mm -hmm. off. But your energy, your vivaciousness is still alive. So what makes you, you, the Rahul Ravel? At this age, what keeps me going is the fact that I may not be here next year. So okay. I might as well make most of it till I'm dead. Living in the yeah, moment. Yeah, being honest about it. Living in the moment. Yeah, being that's honest about it. You know, you know yeah. Like, yeah, that's it. You never know at this age. In any case, I think uh, I passed my expiry date. So I'm living <laughs> on uh, on uh, the mandatory overs. So but make the most of it. That's that's not. But that is what we wanted to. I don't know, ma'am, if I'll reach 71 or not. No, sir. I will be 70. All, all our well wishes I'll are be with 70. you. I'll be 70. Yeah. So I was... don't know. You said it's a, it's a well wish, but uh, I don't know if it's a well wish or not. Because. But we would love to see you again and again. Of course. Cause that's any time. Don't worry, even if I go, I'll come back and see you. <laughs> you can be rest assured no. about that. But that's a very beautiful thing said by Sir. Live in the moment. That is what he is doing. Yeah. Just live the present. Live the time what you are and get the maximum out of it. And I, mean, I came here today because, uh, you know, even though my doctor was vehement and my family was vehement because mm -hmm. I was not well. And doctor said, I'm not letting you take a flight. I said, I'm going. Whether you like it or not. So we got lucky today. So to I, have I you just with came us. here. Yeah. So on that note, I would really would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart. No, I no, got the I'm, I really enjoyed this because uh, touch with you and uh, you know got the privilege to question you few things which I really there, though there are a list of questions what I still have but there are time constraints. Uh, Priyanka, if you can take up the questions from the audience. Yeah, the mic now. is here with me. Yeah, Monica. I want to set the ball rolling very quickly. Yeah. Are we allowed to ask his about his romantic nature, that part? Uh, Rajas? <laughs> Mr. Raj Kapoor. I thought you were my, <laughs> <about> my romantic <laughs> nature. Pehle aap hi bata dije, no, no, I'm Mr. sorry. Uh, uh, because I think he led a very, very colorful and a, a very, yeah, very but, colorful uh, life. But you know, when I uh, when I did this book, mm -hmm. I had thought I would uh, not uh, talk about his uh, his romantic. Uh, Side of it. Honey? <laughs> so, if we have any questions from the audience. Yaman. Uh, thank you, Rahul sir, for your crisp narrative and description because we, co we could actually visualize the stories you said. I just want to ask you a question. What makes Raj Kapoor the legend or an extraordinary, extraordinarily successful person in his field? Because if you tell something, I think some qualities are like common to all the fields. Now that we are talking about films, uh, what is your uh, perception about his special qualities which you think that made him super successful or unique like uh, no one was like him ever before? I think his, uh, his uh, 360 degree knowledge of everything which goes into a narrative in a film and uh, that's an art he had mastered and uh, that's what really made him, uh, made, made him Raj Kapoor, which uh, till now has not happened again. That I think is, uh, he would pick up small things from anywhere. And like Ram Tiri Ganga Meli, he had gone for a wedding to Delhi and Ravinder Jain was the wedding singer. He sang this song there, Ek Radha, Ek Meera. And he went up to him and said, Ki, look, uh, this song is mine. I'm going to make a film based on this song. And then he got the story written Ram of uh, Ram Tiri Ganga Meli because he also remembered ये रामचंद्र परमंत में ये लिखा हुआ था चैप्टर है जिसमें राम जी जब अलाबाद आते हैं तो ही जन बोट एंड वो जो बोट में ना उसको कहते हैं कि ये गंगा जो है ये इतनी मिट्टी है इतना धूल है इसमें तो ये तो पवित्र जगह है एंड ही सेज 
कि राम तेरी गंगा में ली हो गई पापियों के पाप धोते धोते सो ही पिक दैट अप ही पिक अप द सॉन्ग एंड ही मेड द फिल्म सो दैट्स द वे ही वर्क्ड सो आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक यू फॉर सच अ यू नो वंडरफुल सेशन व्हिच यू गिव एंड यू एनलाइटेंड अस विद सो मेनी स्टोरीज एंड like you are filled with so many experiences and knowledge and thank you for sharing that with all of us and uh, i would like to ask you in today's uh, world where you see uh, movies on a national as well as an international level so do you find any uh, director's work or any actor's work who you think reflects at least a part of raj kapoor yes uh, let's talk about indian cinema that are uh, some very brilliant directors today and uh, <clears throat> well, i think knowledge is something which uh, nobody does completely nobody has complete knowledge you it's a learning process i watch every film for me it's more of a learning process to see what people are doing there are some very brilliant filmmakers uh, there are some who should not be filmmakers <laughs> but they are successful so uh, but uh, i don't know that quality of raj kapoor that uh, the 360 degree knowledge i was talking about i have yet to see it in anybody sir mai jab aapko sun rahi thi to lag raha tha jaise bada spiritual rishta raha hai aapka aur raj ji ka ji aur mujhe lagta hai ki aapke wo har maqam mein aapne unse baat cheet kari hai mera bahut hi simple sawal hai aaj bhi jab agar baat karna chaho to kya baat karoge aap raj ji se राज साहब से एक ही बात करूंगा फिल्मों के बारे में वो बात एक करेंगे मैंने किताब शुरू भी वहां से की है कि आ, मेरे सपने में राज साहब दिखे मुझे और वो बहुत ही मायूस थे कि फिल्में इस तरीके से बन रही है और वो जो एक था उनका जो ही वो डेफिनेटली वो यही कहते हैं कि आजकल लोग फिल्में नहीं बना रहे we are not shooting films we are shooting numbers you know we are only concerned with what happens on a friday saturday sunday we are not concerned about that that's not film making so raj sir ki jo ek film thi mera naam joker us time ke hisab se that was the movie quite ahead of time was not acceptable at that time but do you think that movie you know if made in today's time would have you know accepted well, uh, very well meranam joker uh, finally turned out to be uh, a huge money spinner for rk mm -hmm. finally it got uh, to be a huge money spinner it didn't happen at that time yeah. i personally feel one of the reasons was that uh, uh, the portion with rishi kapoor and then the portion of the russian circus mm -hmm. it was fine but then when the rajendra kumar padmini and uh, raj kapoor thing started it got a little tedious mm -hmm. but these first two bits so it were it was yeah it was yeah it was it was in fact uh, when we uh, uh, edited the film it ran for how many it ran for 31000 feet which was it ran for 6 hours and 40 minutes wow. the first edit and um, it was appalling you know so and then uh, we ran it again for some people and uh, raj sahab was standing he used to stand outside and watch the film he told me he said uh, uh, what reel is this so i said it was reel number 18 he said theek hai tell the projection is that after reel 20 to run it straight from 27 So remove six reels from in between. Six reels is a hell of a long time, sixty minutes, and uh, we removed it. It made no difference to the narrative. Mm -hmm. You know, it did not make it so. That was the day when all of us felt that something is going wrong. But uh, again, Ratha finally cut it down to about four and a half hours. But he said a very, a very wise thing. even after four and a half hours we all felt by we means all the people working with him 
we felt it should be cut down further. <clears throat> and he said, uh, look, as far as I'm concerned, as a director, I think this is the perfect length. I don't think I can cut anything, and I don't need to add anything. But you people say it's too long. I say it's not long. The only time I will realize that it's too long is on Friday when the film releases. And a man who pays money for the ticket, when he comes out of the film after the first show, and if that man says it's too long, then I will realize, yes, he's right, and then I will start cutting it down. Then automatically I'll understand where it went wrong. But I can't do it now. And at that time, if I decide to cut something off, it won't work. Because you can't flog a dead horse and make him stand up again. It's still the one of the longest uh, movie yeah. in the Bollywood what we have. It took some time for it to click. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, after, I think, after about uh, five years of uh, the film releasing. Yeah, it after that. Yeah, and then gradually the appreciation started. But it's uh, became a big money spinner of Rorke. The biggest, of course, ever for them was uh, uh, Ram Tiri Ganga Mele. Ram Tiri Ganga Mele. Yeah, the biggest ever. No, Bobby was a huge money spinner, but not like Ram Tiri Ganga Mele. And... Um, that he, was the last film. That was his last film. And um, he had done the script of Henna. Unfortunately, he could not make it. But Andhari Ganga Mali also, uh, he was quite sure. He had one thing in his mind. He told us that, he said, look, there's a scene in Andhari Ganga Mali that when uh, Chimpudas Rajiv goes up to get the Ganga for the grandmother, and uh, there he sees Mandakini. Mm that waterfall mm. song of hers, mm. and she's walking down, she slips, mm -hmm. and he catches her hand, and uh, he asks her there, ki naam kya tumara? and she says, Ganga. Now, when the film released, there was a theatre in Bombay, which used to run the first show at 6 in the morning. Wow. All the factory workers coming out of a night shift would see the movie. He called up the manager there and said, listen, when the show starts at 6, after 30 minutes, there is a scene. Please watch this scene carefully and I'll call you back later. So he was asking, what do you say? See, if people react to that scene, then this film will be successful. If people don't react to that scene, this film will not be successful. And when he called him up, the manager said, he said, the whole house had broken out into a huge applause and whistles. And he said, Ki, look, the film is going to be a big hit. And that's what he said. What was the scene? Pardon? Have to see it again. Yeah, it's there. Yeah. I mean, I mean, just something struck him. He said that scene works, the whole film will work. So I think that's a very beautiful thing. Listen to your intuitions. Your intuitions work so well that it always falls in your favor. That is, I think, what Rajji was. He also said, no, always follow your heart. Yes. You know, don't do something which your heart says not to do. Yeah, we have one last question. Yeah. Namaskar, this is Omkar here. Yeah. And so it's, it's very good to, you know, listen to such a, uh, to listen to a, uh, about, to listen to great legend. And why Legion, I would just like to say that he is not with us, but still we are sitting here and talking about him. That itself is a legend. So I just want to know, sir, actually uh, I was in Pune, I did my engineering in Pune, and uh, in first year they took, they took us to uh, uh, Raj Kapoor Memorial in Pune. Yes. So could you please brief, it's, it's a beautiful uh, museum and a music studio. Could you just brief about something about that? Uh, that is a Loni. That's uh, the farm which he had. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, he spent a lot of days and we spent a lot of time in the farm. He used to uh, do a lot of shooting in Pune. We had an editing room there. And uh, uh, he spent more time there than he would in Bombay. And uh, he would love going to Pune and he'd want to go by train. He'd uh, go by a train called the Deccan Queen, uh, which for which he would drive from Chembur to Viti, 
which was halfway through to going to Chembur. And his only reason for going to by Deccan Queen was that he liked the canteen inside there very much. Okay. So he could eat everything. Um, and uh, to me, it played a big part in my life because going to the station mm -hmm. whenever we had to go, uh, I used to always reach half an hour, 45 minutes earlier. And uh, just opposite VT, uh, there's a, a gully. And there's a very famous eating place there called Pancham Puri House. Okay. So we used to all meet and we used to go to Pancham Puri House. And then we used to walk across, just hop across. So it was at Pancham Puri House. I've seen the monsoons. Ki jo office khatmone ka time hota tha. People coming out of the offices, the only thing I could see were black umbrellas. Just black umbrellas. And that visual stayed in my mind, which I used in Arjun. Arjun, yeah, the umbrella. Just the black umbrella. Yes. So that came from, from, from there. there. Okay. So beautiful. I think we will uh, take, uh, you can take some more questions later after the official time is over. I know quite a few want to ask questions. Um, so, friends, Prabha Khaitan Foundation is a non profit trust which is dedicated to promoting performing arts, culture, education, literature, gender equality, and women's empowerment. Under this banner, we thank Mr. Rawal to agree to come to us in Nagpur and spend time with us. A small trivia, uh, you know that Raj Kapoor's only sister was married in Nagpur. Yes. So before I go ahead to thank, I would like to request Mr. Pramit Dhimaskar uh, from Hotel Radisson to kindly give the traditional stole to sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, you Premier. Thank you so much for doing this for us. I'd like to now thank our hospitality partner, Radisson Blue, our media partner, Lokmat, and Sri Cement, our Hesas Ladies of Nagpur, last but not the least, you, our most gracious audience. Thank you so much for being with us to take our time at a moment like this when you're all are busy with weddings and functions. You've come. We really appreciate your presence. And once again, sir, thank you. Thank you very much. Really, I'm glad you didn't listen to your doctor. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. It was wonderful. Thank you very much. And those who can ask questions now can ask. Yeah. The floor is open Why for no questions. Sir, there is the official time given to us by PKS, so we have to abide by that. Okay. If you have time, if somebody wants to ask a question, would you like to? So, uh, like, Kapoor's, is, Kapoor's are the first family yeah. and, uh, and, you know, whenever an actor child would come up, people would be very excited that Raj Kapoor's son is launching and then Rishi Kapoor's son is launching and all that. And suddenly, now, the vibe is of, uh, it's been tagged as nepotism. So how do you, I mean, everybody's good used to be happy about having a star child and now suddenly it's like, are a star child. See, uh, they pushed a bit too far. They pushed a bit too far. And there's no guarantee that a star child will become successful. Yeah. There's no guarantee on that. So uh, I think they pushed that star child thing a bit too far. Uh, the particular producer who just wants every star child to be and around. then makes one film or doesn't make a film, it's immaterial. But uh, from all the so-called stars which we have, if we sit and count the successful hmm. star kids, it will be very small the list yeah. compared to what we have the in the industry. I'm sorry, the book was, uh, there was some kind of a logistic uh, problem. No, no, this is the book and we will uh, request you to give your addresses and it will be signed by sir and we shall uh, go to you ASAP. There was a logistic problem, that's why the book did not reach, but um, 
if it, uh, I said that if it, if they, when they do come, send it to me. I will sign them all and send them back to you. She has a question. Yeah. So if uh, I could see that uh, whenever you talk, even uh, like you talk 10 sentences, 9 sentences are about Raj sir, Raj Kapoor ji. What is, like, have, uh, have you ever thought that if he had not been in your life, where would your life be? I would be in Canada being a nuclear, uh, I've been doing my nuclear science over there. That's what I'm doing, yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have been here. So, I, I wouldn't have been here. So, you, uh, like, uh, I think, uh, uh, would you uh, like, would you like to tell us the importance of like a mentor in our lives? Well, uh, importance for me is that um, everything I know or whatever little I know is all because this one man. Uh, that's all. Everything for me uh, rotates around him. It's, it's like the galaxy goes around. Uh, it's like that. My life goes around. This one, man. So, one more question. Yes. Uh, who is the best director at present? Uh, Ma'am, I do not want to name people. I'm. Uh, uh, I don't think it's fair because everybody has their own likes and dislikes. So, um, I don't think it's fair to really say that this is the best or this is. Uh, any other questions? May I ask? Yeah, yeah, sure. Actually, as a filmmaker, I feel always that uh, before this film comes, you know, uh, on the uh, uh, theatre or uh, yeah. news releases, it comes like after Zahan mein hi wo puri film dikhai dene lagti hai. Ye filmmaker ki khubi hoti hai. Aap bhi filmmaker rahe hai, Raj sahab bhi filmmaker hai. To aap film mein kaise dekhte the? ये मैं कहने में रात साम में जो क्वालिटी थी कि वो कहानियाँ सुनते नहीं थे वो कहानियाँ देखते थे हाँ तो वो I think was the most important thing कि वो देखते थे कि ये कहानी बनेगी तो क्या होगा that I think is fair वो हमेशा ये फिल्मों के करते थे जैसे यही जो उन्होंने प्रेम रोग जब बनाई थी तो ये एक प्ले था रेडियो प्ले था डॉक्टर कामना चंद्रा का था तो उन्होंने रेडियो पे सुना था और बहुत पसंद आया था उनको फिर उन्होंने बुला के उनसे राइट्स करीबे और फिर रणधीर कपूर से उन्होंने कहा कि मैं ये मैं बना रहा हूँ प्ले एंड आई एम गोइंग टू मेक द ग्रेटेस्ट लव स्टोरी आर के सेवर मेड और उन्होंने वो प्ले सुना डबू साहब को तो डबू साहब ने सुन के बोला कि आप यू सेड यू मेकिंग लव स्टोरी एंड व्हाट आई हर्ड देयर इज नो मेल इन दिस देयर इज ओनली अ विडो एंड हर father-in-law, the elder one. So where is the love story gone? He said, I'll make a film like this. Yeah, and that's what happened. It turned out to be a great love story. Jyoti, do you?